The full moon, which occurs in March, was traditionally known by indigenous peoples of various latitudes by different names. Some called it the crust moon for snow, which would thaw and refreeze. The crow moon for the sound of crows ushering in the change of seasons. And even the sap moon for the taste of the sugary delight which is provided by the maples. Today, people may know it as the worm moon. I can think of one bird who can really appreciate the latter name, as the American robin's primary diet includes copious helpings of earthworms. There are many signs of spring, but you know, my favorite is a byproduct of the afternoon rains. What is your favorite signal that spring has arrived? Let me know in a comment. Ah, the glorious dawn of a new day. This is the sunrise on the day of a solar eclipse, a signal of birth and rebirth as the southern hemisphere relinquishes its hold on the warm season and longer days return to the north. Speaking of birth and rebirth, all was quiet on the homestead, except under this artificial sun where a pair of khaki Campbell ducklings are growing to join us as part of the garden. The lucky elephant garden fountain is now running to refill the pond. As the ducklings make their way around the triangle garden, they stop to sample bits of plants and seeds on their way for a swim. This ought to be exciting, even if a bit cold. Uh-oh, whoops, better find your sea legs. Actually, we did have an earthquake here just a couple weeks back before the solar eclipse. <laughs> yeah, I kind of fell over there when the duckling jumped out of my arms, eager to get back in the water. The koi seemed to gaze up in wonder as they swam closer to inspect the newcomers in their environment. Ah, nothing like a bit of cleaning and preening after a nice cool bath. Whoops, you fell over, huh? Oh well. As a ducky daddy, I did wonder how quickly the ducklings would live up to their reputation as residents in the adventurous garden. We were both about to find that out. Well, they certainly take after their mother. So polite and proper following the garden path. It's a good thing nobody films me out there trampling the new flowers as I shortcut through the meadow. <laughs> they had a nice little outing. Now they're going over to their mama. <laughs> After the ducklings settled in for a nap, I got myself set up outside to record the solar eclipse, hoping to share it with all of you. Mother Nature had other plans, however, and dense cloud cover rolled in exactly as the eclipse began and was unrelenting until the following day. Whenever a window of opportunity presented itself, I quickly depressed the shutter button on the camera, hoping to record something, anything. Luck was on my side. Somehow, I was able to take just one photograph between some dark clouds, and here it is. What do you think of it? Did you see the eclipse? comment and let me know. It's been said that good science is good observation. If the moon pulls on the oceans with enough gravity to create high and low tides, you can bet your bottom dollar that it has an effect on the water in all living bodies on Earth as well. 
I had a suspicion that this would be apparent in the activity of wildlife around this time. Oh, really? So I made a mental note to be present and observe. Not just the sky, but the activity at the feeders as well. Through the years, we have seen a few colorful birds here and there, but today and the days to come, something unusual happened. We didn't see a single goldfinch. We saw 15. We didn't see a single purple finch either. We saw the whole flock. It was as if a rainbow of life had descended down from the heavens and graced us with its presence in the form of birds in every hue imaginable. Our nesting bluebirds and lovey doveys Blue Jay, the red-bellied woodpecker, along with the downy, and no shortage of cowbirds, among others. It was a marvelous viewing experience. Well, good morning. Let's see if we can do some filming before the traffic starts today. It's a uh, chilly spring morning. The two circular stone raised garden beds with the irises are doing wonderfully right now. This one was built last year. You can see that process in a prior video after the tree was taken down. A very large tree, I might add. And uh, it looks like all of the transplants were successful. They came from this bed over here, if you recall. The ones here are a little more established in terms of root system, so they're a bit further ahead, but both doing fantastic nonetheless. If we head over here, unfortunately the deer once again got to the green giant arborvitae here and did some serious damage to the uh, left hand side from where we're looking here. Not sure how we're gonna deal with that yet. I am happy to see this. Leave it in the comments below if you know what this plant is. I'm not going to tell you, but uh, a funny name for it is toilet paper of, of the field or the woods because it's so soft. But I won't give you any other hints, though. You have to leave it in the comments what, what you think that is or what you know that is. I raked out this area here and set down the rest of my wildflower seed mix. It looks like most of that has germinated because we've had about a week straight of steady light rain. So this should be a nice burst of color. Ah, it's a nice little evergreen here. Not growing very fast, but looks quite happy. Perfect time of morning to take a look at the Crowder Vesuvius purple plum. Let me see if I got the camera on that. There you go. Yes, perfect sunlight. Such pretty colors. You may notice I have removed the installation of the stones and the large oak limb that was there, as well as the plantings because we're going to try something new for this season. The twin twisted red bud here is just starting to bud out a bit. You can see that. Buds are forming. It has healed nicely from the buck rub. There was a bad buck rub here. I uh, sprayed it down with some fungal medication because it started to get a disease there and the tree has healed it over nicely. All right, on to the back garden, everybody's favorite area. There's some construction off to my right here. You may or may not see what that's about in this video. It's not complete, but I'm working on it. This is my original design. No, it's not a chicken coop, but close. Made of all free pallets that I was given.
Should be a lot of fun this season. We'll start in the back corner because we never do that. So two years ago, I sprinkled a copious amount of Foxy Foxglove seeds along the border here. And there you have it. Biennial plants. They uh, took two years and they are cropping up everywhere. <laughs> I didn't know how many it would take. I, but I'll take what I can get, I guess. Our little uh, transplanted rescued cedar here. Doing fine. There is a small pine in here. There it is, right there. I'm very excited to see what kind of color we get on the foxglove this year here, though. The row of emerald, or sorry, the green giant arborvitaes here that the deer uh, attempted to mow down <laughs> before the fence was installed have, have been recovering, although they're Growth is stunted by the shade of the massive maple tree here, which I don't mind. And if you were wondering what happened to the wood from the front, well, there it is. We've added it to the part of the garden that I call Driftwood Park. The supervisor garden, the triangle garden here is coming back to life. Wow. Looks like winter didn't even happen to this. Very cool. We've lightened the uh, fish load in the pond. Gave away about 25 of the goldfish uh, Shubunkin hybrids to make room for the koi to grow larger. Built this little sphere of stones here, a circle of stones for a potted plant that will be going back outside. Starting to see some buds on the nine bark. This is good. Irises are doing fine here as well as the ones growing pond side. More catmint down there. Ooh, wildflowers. These didn't uh, bloom for eight years and all of a sudden last year they started which was very exciting i don't know i guess they're just happy to have friends out in the meadow here <clears throat> pearl the other red leafed red bud tree over here is doing good just starting to bud out i'm letting all of the butterfly bushes as they stand i really am curious to see how they turn out this season without cutting them back down to ground level we're just gonna cut across here. I've got a couple areas you may notice on the ground where I've planted butterfly weed, it's called. Nice, small orange flower. My mother gave me these uh, bulbs. Ah, there we go. There they are, Ma. They're doing just fine. I got some here, I got some down there below Pearl, the tree. My cone flowers are starting to uh, return. This was an art installation that I did. I just wrapped some uh, copper brake line around a, a metal stake and planted it in the ground. Some people had asked if I was attempting to do electroculture gardening. Uh, I'm not, but I mean, I can let you know if for some reason the plants grow extraordinarily well in this area of the garden. Perhaps it can be chalked up to that, who knows. Pink lemonade blueberry bush. Plenty of buds, everybody's ready to open up there. This was, uh, I don't know, some people call it a torch lily. I don't recall what the exact name of it was, but this was the yellow one. That one's uh, coming up strong, which is interesting because the soil here is quite poor. Clay and stone as compared to down below where the other one has not come up yet. These were the Shasta daisies. They're, they're starting out strong. This was a tri-color butterfly bush. This one, okay, it's, it's bouncing back. It looked like it had completely died off, but I had faith and it's coming back. Behind the bridge here, we normally plant a wildflower garden, but this year I have so many canna bulbs, both red and green, that we're gonna plant a little canna forest here. 
should be interesting. Here's our uh, low juniper. It's growing nice. It handled the winter in the pot just fine. Our uh, zebra grass or uh, porcupine grass, I can't remember which one it was. I think it said zebra grass is starting to sprout, which seems kind of early to me. This is a unintentional uh, foxy fox glove, and that's okay. Here's our peonies, they're spreading out nicely. We've got some celandine, some lupine, some forget me not in here. There's some more lilies over there. I am going to bring our banana tree outside and plant it back in here so we'll have our banana once the weather warms up just a bit more. This was very impressive, planted just last season at the end, I believe. Our purple smoke bush. This is about five foot five right now and we planted it at about, I don't know, three, three, three and a half feet. I don't recall what this is, so we're going to be surprised when it grows. You can take a look if you want. Maybe you can identify it. Kind of hard to remember everything. This was our candy corn spirea, it's called. This is a uh, tri-color low shrub. I had cut that down to the ground, not expecting it to grow back, and there it is, so we're happy. The twin yellow delicious dwarf apple trees are both budding out and growing nicely come back around here sorry hopefully you're not getting busy with me walking all around here this was our really tall pink lemonade blueberry all the buds are opening up on that and another one right here just to help with pollination now if we look over to the left here, this was the new rock garden that was just put in. This was a hosta variety, I don't recall, <laughs> sorry, I don't recall the names of everything in here just yet, I'm, I'm still learning as they're new, new to me and, and new to the garden, but everything in there seems to be very happy with the uh, soil. So this was filled with soil that I dug out of the forest, and then I topped it off with just two bags of store-bought soil with a lot of uh, mulched you know wood products in it just to give it a little bit of uh, resistance to you know losing moisture as quickly <clears throat> here's our happy propane tank if you have to have a propane tank in your garden may your propane tank be as happy as that one <laughs> this is the daylily bed that came with the house coming up nice here there's another Sorry, so up top I said there were yellow torch lilies, I guess people call them. Here's where the orange ones are. They're not coming up quite as quickly, which is interesting because there's very nice uh, soil down here. Nice and loamy and plenty of moisture. This butterfly bush seems to be the strongest of the three that we have here. Uh, didn't know hollyhocks were biannual plants, so this won't be coming back up. Although I did plant them throughout here, we'll see if any of them do come up. This might be more butterfly weed experiment. We take a look up in the top corner. I didn't know if our bleeding hearts were going to make it either, and they did. The bleeding hearts have uh, come back up to join the party. We have a... <laughs> Uh, I guess this is a red clover that's planted itself here. Um, we transplanted a rose from the side of the road and put it in here. We're going to see what we get out of that. We got a little privet growing here. I'm going to let it grow because I just think it's cool looking. This whole hillside here is lily of the valley. If, I don't know if we can see it on camera now, but they're just starting to pop up. I guess in another uh, two weeks or so, this will be all beautiful white little bell flowers.
our arched cherry tree here. It's all butted out nicely. We're going to be planting some flowers and some more cannas, some red and some green in between the green giant arborvitaes here, just to fill in some space. I didn't anticipate how slow these would grow given the quality of the, the, the poor soil up here. So I really thought with a good amount of sun and, and the extra watering that they would have grown faster, but the deer ate the entire bottom off of a few of them, as you saw before. So we're gonna just fill this space in with cannas and see how well they do. Here's my uh, grounding stone statue here. Love to just put my hand here and just have a moment to focus and to ground myself. Over on the side of the forest beyond the stone border here, we have even more of the foxy foxglove growing everywhere. That's gonna be cool. Hey you, yeah you, I see you running off there. Don't be a turkey. If you made it this far, you liked what you saw. So go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> see you next time. This is Adventurous Gardener.